डॉक्टर स्मारकी पटनाईक यू कॅन स्टार्ट नाव Good afternoon sir this is dr smariki patnaik uh, i'll just take few minutes to you know give you a brief introduction of yours and then i'll request you to uh, proceed with your deliberation sir thank you good afternoon everyone welcome to the seventh session of the international certificate program on hrm for excellence today we have with us dr chucks ibekwe as our uh, eminent speaker for the day Dr Chucks lectures in the College of Business and Economics in the University of Wisconsin Whitewater USA he earned two doctoral degrees a phd in international conflict management and doctor of management he teaches management courses in including organizational development and supervisory management as well as advises management students association his research interests include business offshoring management multinational corporation management employee engagement organizational development and change and small and medium scale business management we welcome you sir to today's program now you may please continue with your deliberation sir thank you uh, moderator dr dr and co participants so i'm so glad that i have to share this moment with you guys for us to reason together and try to understand make meaning out of what is employee engagement so for us to start we will look at some of the major things we will cover basically there are about uh five items that will cover major items we will address but that will also not stop us from looking at other sub items that may not have been properly articulated here so one of the things we want to understand first is what is we want to differentiate between the concept of organizational uh, employee management engagement and employee engagement involvement Secondly we want to look at the goal what do we want to achieve by engaging employees or making them committed to that organization if we look at that we we'll now try to look at the other concept that talks about involvement are they the same thing or do we have some things that are different one or two things that differentiate employee engagement and employee involvement we also want to look at what we have to achieve and the various ways we may engage an employee within the organization so how do we engage him or her and whose responsibility it is to make that happen so employee engagement is it a one way traffic or do we have dual traffic that is who and who who are the partners in employee engagement when we look at that we also try to address the issue is like there is an issue or is that a problem so to say going on today around the world i'm sure none of us here participants today is unaware of covid-19 and how it has affected industries I don't know any country in the world today where either family member friend or even as students would say that their activities were not disrupted between february and even till now because when i talked in the us as at last night we are 5. something million cases of covid-19 so if that is the case it means that as an employer as an employee a part of me a part of you have been affected by this covid 
So that effect might have some relationship to the way an employee sees his or her work today. In other words, it has affected the level of uh, engagement. If I had to cite a recent survey by Gallup Incorporation, it says that 37% of global workforce are not fully engaged. We'll talk about that when we go further. So also we want to look at um, how we can then move away from that 37% to something greater, maybe 50 plus percent in this period in the level of employee engagement. Then there will be simulations, because if I have to talk for so long without you and me having some breakout sessions, uh, it may not be so engaging. So in my way of interacting with uh, my students and colleagues, of course, all of us are participants in this program now. So I always invite my students to chip in questions or ideas while we are having discussions, because that is part of that engagement. So we go ahead and start by trying to look at what engagement is. So Morato, please, I, I don't know, my, I'm trying to get my slides shared here. So if uh, you guys so are- Okay, uh, you, you can project it, please. So first of all, we want to look at what is engagement. And by looking at that, we will present the first issue involved. As a CEO, that's Chief Executive Officer, as a General Manager, Supervisor, Manager Trainee, or anyone in any organization, if you are engaged, you have that aura around you. You serve as a magnetic for, um, force. And you begin to magnetize, to attract people, other organizational members around you. Because that engagement brings out an attitude and a behavior in you. Such that people see that positive energy coming from you. Oh, I want to be like that person. I want to talk about my organization. This organization is so good that I can't substitute it with any other organization. I can't think of myself leaving this organization for another one. So when you have such environment, you see that from the least person in the organization to the highest person, they are working hand in hand. And that working hand in hand results in greater performance, self-actualization, which is tied to both individual and the organizational goal. In the case of engagement, that collaboration, the parties in the collaboration, they share roles. So employee engagement is not a one-way traffic. When you're talking of employee engagement, for him or her to be fully engaged, the organization and the employee have to be partners. Let's look at the organization, not as uh, maybe uh, Patel Holdings Limited. Let us look at organization as you and me in that organization who are members of the Patel Holding Limited. So from the least manager to the highest manager, their roles in that collaboration 
is to provide development opportunities, be a mentor, be a gateway, an entrance to the lower employees to ensure that they succeed because their success is the success of that organization. The managers are also committed. They commit the resources of the organization to ensure that subordinates are engaged. Those resources include the time they have, the mentorship, the reward, and I don't want to use punishment. In organizational developmental change, we talk about discipline. Because discipline has a milder way or meaning to punishment. Because sometimes in an organization, somebody has to be disciplined, but not punished. The goal of discipline is to bring the person to uh, fall in line with the values and visions of an organization. So when we allow such, then the subordinate in his or her own role use the opportunities provided, bring in his or her own ideas and skills, which leads to career advancement and becoming co-owners of the organization. When you are a co-owner of the organization, when you feel that you are part of that organization, you become totally engaged in it. And that engagement brings not only your success, but the success of the organization. So what does uh, employee engagement mean? My good friends, I want you to understand that as we have many professionals, as we have many scholars engaged in this novel meaning, it is not that employee engagement has not been there from the very moment industrialization started. It has been there, but it's going innovation every year, every time. And of course, we are going to see how it has come into this 2020 we are because of coronavirus. So what I'm driving there is that we have several meanings, several definitions of employee engagement given by scholars, given by uh, professionals. And I'm sure that by the time you carry out one of the activities in this uh, presentation, maybe by the end of the hour, when you go home, please, I would want you to create a network with people around you and those present today so that you can share what your own conception, what your, how you conceptualize employee engagement. When you share it and you, with them and they give you their own ideas, then you begin to iron out what and what is relevant in your today's employee engagement uh, procedures. So I'll take the first one given by Macy and Snyder, 2008. So who summed up employee engagement as the level of contribution employees can make to their work practices and how much inputs they can make in the decision-making processes. So what do employees contribute in the workplace? You came into the workplace or into the organization with your skills. You contribute your time your innovative ideas. And when you do that, you are expected because you have something you brought into the organization. You expect the organization to provide you that opportunity to be part of the decision-making process where you determine or you contribute to how work is done, how your reward should be shaped among other decision processes that lead to the overall success of that organization. 
Because if you're in an organization where you are only a yes ma'am or yes sir person, at the end, it will be very difficult for you to reach that self-actualization because you are training, not the moment you step into that organization, you want to become that person, you want to be the highest person in that organization with time because you are putting in your best. So if you are not part of that decision-making process, it leads to a psychological state which affects what you do and how you do it. Because you'll be thinking, how am I not as productive? How am I not as good minded as Sunil, as uh, Dr. Bakta, or any other person, your HR manager, or any other person you aspire, you want to be like the CEO of that organization? And also, it gives, because you're part of the decision making, it also gives you opportunity to learn and improve on what you already know. So that when you become that person you want to be in that organization, you also become a mentor and continue that process of contributing, playing a role in employee engagement. You can't do that if you don't learn and if you don't put into practice what you're learning. So, Messi Snyder 2008 further stated that employee engagement is a desirable condition. It is a desirable condition because it has an organizational purpose. It connotes involvement. Your involvement, supervisor's involvement, other people working in that organization, what we call organizational constituents, everybody get to be involved in it. And we have to show that desire. We have to be enthusiastic about it. Others, we, our efforts should be focused towards achieving the mission, the vision of your organization. And it, which is also, because when you get involved in an organization, when you become a member of that organization, it means, among other things, that your culture, your value is in line, is in agreement with that organization. And it is one of the things that drive your ability, your level of engagement with that organization. So that is where employee engagement is both attitudinal and behavioral. So it has the components of attitudes and behavior in them. DTS International 2014, to show you how varied the definition of employee engagement have been. I'm not challenging you, I'm asking you now to think about yourself because you are part of this definition, you are part of this conceptualization of engagement. And it is the, that conceptualization that gives you idea that helps to channel your attitude the way you come, you come into the employee engagement. So the DTS International compiled 25 definitions from different scholars and practitioners. So on one concept alone in HR management. So if we have 25 definitions, you can then agree with me that my own definition now may even change tomorrow. What more? Because of the environment I am or the organization I'm working in. And I want you also to have that same mindset. You can't act out. You can't perform. You can't accomplish what you don't have concept or you don't have idea about. That is why we have this very definition of uh, employee engagement. So among those 25, I've taken only two from the 25. But I've also, if you look at the footnotes on my slide, you can see that I provided a link uh, or the information where it is derived for so that you can go. If you want to look at those 25 definitions, you can take. So let us look at two that. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yes. 
Uh, sir, can you just let me know when to change the sound? Repeat what you said, please. Sir, can you please let me know when to change the slide? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, is go to slide six, please. Okay, sir. Okay. Are we there? Yes, sir. Please continue. Okay. So you can see that here I've taken two slides, uh, two definitions that. Out of that 25 provided by DTS International 2015, that are relevant to what we are discussing today. So the first one was given by Hewitt. They said EE, that is employee engagement, is derived from these various approaches to employee engagement. So employee engagement is a heightened emotional and intellectual connection that an employee has for his or her job. For the organization, for the manager he or she is working under, or co-workers that in turn influence him or her to apply additional discretionary effort to his or her work. So, first of all, your emotion, you, you have everything to do. All your being, your emotion is attached to the organization you work. You become a member of that organization. Whatever affects that organization affects you. And then you are looking at your manager, the way he or she folds up his or her sleeve and puts his hands on the deck. Not the one sitting in the office with tie and everything and then ask you go out there and do this and that. These people are involved and that helps you to understand. It gets you emotionally attacked. Look at what my manager is doing. He or she is not even thinking of money. He or she has descended low to help me, to build me up, to correct me, to show me the way, the culture of the organization. And then you look at your colleagues, especially this time we are in. Oh, Jen is sick, or Jen is uh, taking care of his or her isolated a family member or loved one in the hospital. And therefore, Despite the fact that he or she is not present, you are no longer in the same office as you used to be, but she calls you from time to time, say, hey, I hope you are able to do this, or you have an issue, you call Jen. Hey, Jen, how do I handle this issue and things like that? Jen was able to guide you through that, despite the fact that she has some of that in distracting her. And then you look at uh, Torat. Uh, Torat, on the other end, is directing the technology that you are using to work from off the office. So all these attitudes, all these behaviors from your coworkers have aligned you, have emerged you with them. And therefore, it gives you that opportunity to say, if my manager is doing this, if my coworker who has this other distraction going on is also doing this, why don't I then do something extraordinary to make sure that I contribute to the effort these people are putting in at work? Then the other definition that I like is one given by William Kahn. He defined personal engagement as the harnessing of organization members themselves to their work roles. So each of us, look at today, we have a, med a moderator in this session of the training. You saw a few minutes ago, she asked me to let her know when I want the slides to be switched. That is a role. 
she's performing in addition to moderating this conference. Look at Dr. Baxter. Look at you and me as participants. Each of us are playing roles. I'm talking now, you're listening. These are roles that each of us are playing. So you see that in a way, this individual is trying to let us know that employee engagement is not only the sole responsibility of the employee. It has to be a coordination. And of course, the organization is a system. And you understand that component, the parts of the system have to work together to achieve the uh, system's goal. So in this, we all try to do everything possible to ensure that we make every person, every part of that organization to bring out his or her best. And how do we do that? We, we go up with them, we assist them, we mentor them, we also play our role by bringing innovations into the system so that we have a shared vision. Information flows. What I know, I'll tell you what you know, you tell me. That I'm talking to you now does not make me an authority over you. I'm only sharing my experiences and you are going to share yours. I also learn from you. That is why organizations that succeed are learning organizations. And that is one of the things I want to achieve today that by the end of our discussion, all of us would have shared ideas that help me to understand what is happening outside of the United States. Maybe you in India, you in uh, Pakistan, you in um, China, you in Nigeria, you in Brazil, or any other country would now share how employees in your different organizations and different countries are engaged. And we learn such practices and you use it to try to make meaning out of the universal employee engagement, because we are talking about workforce and your program is international certificate. So international cannot confine you only to India. You have to have ideas about what is happening in other countries. Okay, so, Please, can you go to slide number seven? Moreto? Yes, sir. We are on slide seven. Okay. So there is this term, employee engagement and employee involvement. Are they the same? So some people would say they are not the same. Others would say that it's a, it's a matter of semantics. So for the purpose of this, uh, this meeting, let us look at some salient points that kind of set the two apart. The, these differences are not cast on sp uh, stone. I want you to understand that in the first place. So first, employee engagement, that is EE, is mostly voluntary. That is one of the things that appealed to me in all discussions about employee engagement. That separates it from employee involvement. So in the case of employee engagement, for you to be engaged in the organization you're working on, you come to it without any person urging you to do it. You take pleasure because you see this organization as your own. So you are taking extra steps to make it succeed. You are not placing reward ahead of your effort. That is one of the areas involvement and engagement differ. Because in involvement, somebody has to urge you. Somebody has to encourage you to do that. Look at two examples, uh, two scenarios there. The first one, the director general of your organization, by name Sunil, approached you. Please, 
we can gain from your wealth of experience if you lead this project team. So you see that nudge from your DG. Ordinarily, you didn't want to be the leader at that organization. You don't want to bring yourself out. You are involved, but you are not engaged. This is not engagement. But on the other hand, you would go to your pro, um, DJ. I said, DJ, um, see, what I want our organization to do this work because I know that if we do it well, we are going to get more contracts from the government. If we do it very well, we are going to satisfy our uh, customers. Therefore, let me lead it. Now, the DJ did not nudge you, did not give you any encouragement, but you have, because of that conscious, that attitude, that emotion you have for the success of your organization, you have volunteered to lead. That is what engagement is all about. And that's how it differentiates itself from involvement. And engagement pushes you to be socially responsible, which is one of the goals of your organization. So please go to slide eight. We want to see another definition of EE as given by a United Kingdom or England-based company known as OPC UK Limited in 2020. That is this year. So which is one of the recent definitions. OPC sees it as a strategy organizations use to build partnership with their employees. Great. I admire this definition. And you can see that this partnership manifests in various forms. It leads to intellectual and emotional bond among the entities. Who are the entities? The organization and the employees. They are the ones in this uh, EE. Another manifestation of this bond, this partnership building, is that it leads to total commitment to the shared objectives of the organization. Shared objective that attracted you in the first place to work in that organization. The objective that has kept you in that organization. The objective that has uh, aroused your emotional bond with that organization. And then it also manifests in the total alignment of your goals and the organizational goals. So you see here that in the two, your organization want to be a growing concern, what business would call growing concern. That is, you want to be a future organization. You don't want to be a one-shot organization. So continuity or sustainability requires that what you retain your workforce. If you are an organization that hires today and fire tomorrow, you are not going to be a future organization. In fact, you are not going to last long. It, the, this pandemic is enough to wipe you out of existence. And I hope you understand that if in the various areas you are coming from or industries you are coming from, you know that. Most many companies have laid out thousands, millions of workers around the world today. So, but if there is commitment, if there is total commitment and everybody is aligned to the goals of the organization, then we are going to see how we can use this to ensure that not only do we retain our workforce, but also that that workforce help us to navigate through this difficult period. Finally, it leads to a commitment to live by organizational values. 
trustworthiness, quality production, and the such other things that make your organization unique from others. Because we are engaged. Because that strategy allow us to commit ourselves. Commit to lead by example. Commit to maintain the organizational culture. So what are our objectives? For us to be so engaged, for us to be so invested in employee uh, engagement. This is slide number nine. So at the end of the day, the objectives we wish to, this is not all of the objectives, it's just a selected few. The objectives manifest in business with engaged employees. So those engage, they, these manifestations include increase in outputs. Employees smart approach, that smart approach, because you are engaged, then you are innovative. You are going extra miles to ensure that the organization remains afloat. So you, you turn your organization into a smart organization where everything is done intelligently, effectively, and efficiently to reduce waste or cost. This smart approach to work results in lowered cost, high quality and innovative products, as well as higher sales and, re uh, and revenue volume. It leads to enhanced communication, leading to the business becoming a learning organization. So enhanced communication ensures that information is flowing without hindrance from top to bottom and from bottom to the top. And it leads to shared values and ideas, support for each other and innovations. Organizational customers become the beneficiaries. Because of innovation, because of reduced cost of production, the quality of products give, uh, customers enjoy from the organization will be high. It will lead to reduced cost of production, which in turn lead to reduced price. Customers get quality products at a price they are comfortable with. And then there is better customer relations. So there are no much complaints for our customers. We don't have much goods uh, returned because of defense and all those kind of things. And at the end, you earn the loyalty of your customers. And remember that without your customers, revenue will not be up, sales will not be up. And then we look at slide number 10, benefits of EE. Businesses that have high engaged workforce, they experience high stock prices because your stock will be in high demand. Of course, one of the major benefits of employee engagement is that they become co-owners. And when you ask John, when you ask Peter, when you ask Johnson, when you ask any person, any employee of an organization, um, when do you, uh, do, do you wanna go to company A? If they're engaged, they will tell you, <laughs> I'm not thinking of leaving this organization. Why do they say that? Because they are in engaged. And because they are engaged, then your turnover, employee turnover rate will be very low. If you have low employee turnover, then the future becomes assured because it is this skill 
the needed skill in your organization that you're going to, that will take you to the future. If you are the organization that hire and fire tomorrow, not only will the cost of production will be going high, but also the cost of hiring and training employees, as well as getting them to align to your organization culture will be very difficult and that becomes a lost opportunity. Then greater customer satisfaction. Gallup Incorporated 2010 suggested the impact of employee engagement on organizational economics as increase in stock value, fat revenue, growth sustainability, engage customer, and as well as engage employee. Now let us look at increase in stock. You can see from slide number 12, Moreto, Cruise 2012 showed us what it takes when we talk about increase in stock value. So there's a relationship. Studies have proved that relationship exists when employees are engaged with the value of stock of their organization. So it leads to more people buying the stock of that organization because they trust your products, the quality of your products, and your employees are doing everything possible to satisfy uh, customer demands. And not only that, they become co-owners. That means people are seeking for your stock because they, you are now paying more dividends for stockholders. The number of subscribers to your stock are greater than the stock you have available. That will push up the price. That is a common economic term. The higher the demand, the higher the price. Okay, so the composite graph on your right shows you what happens when the value of stock is increasing. From initial 100,000 or 0,000 to now rising up to $320,000 as the value of your stock, you can imagine uh, the demand. You can imagine what that means to your organization in terms of your operating cost, um, uh, capital, and other things. Another thing benefit is that it leads to fat revenue. So what this is showing us is that an organization has a level of revenue prior to employees being fully engaged. So the higher the level of engagement, the higher your uh, sales price and you, um, your sales volume. And you know that sales volume is what drives your revenue. And not only that, revenue is increased when you have low cost production. That means you are producing at lower cost and the, that leads to an increase in whatever you can gain because of increased sales. And you're going to see that also the safety of your employees becomes something of importance. Because now everybody is engaged. You are looking after your co-worker. You don't want to put uh, obstacles in a way that can injure or uh, wound your co-workers. So safety equipment are provided by the organization and everybody is security conscious. So not many people are taken to hospital because they are injured at job. Or if in US, you don't sue any person for uh, workplace injuries, sleep and fall, that is you're working on, on the hallway or walking into your department and all of a sudden because the cleaner just mopped the floor and there was no warning to be conscious while you walk, all of a sudden you sleep and then break a bone. So you can sue your company and they pay you millions of dollars because that was accident in the workplace. 
they engage employees once they reduce distance. You can see from the figure on your right, and this slide number 13, you can see the benefits that accrue to an organization where its workers are engaged. So, engaged employees also result in sustained growth, business growth. What do we mean by growth sustainability? Growth sustainability talks about futurism in business, which embraces opportunities and manage potential challenges from economic, environmental, and social developments. It employs scarce organizational resources to create long-term value for organization. So you are looking beyond COVID-19 era. You know that you are going to come out stronger because you have the personnel who are committed. You have the resources they are using to do their work. Each of these help them to move forward and to help your organization to remain uh, viable, to remain visible in its industry after this pandemic we are in. Engaged employees ensure, among other things, that the organization maintains partnership and collaboration between employees and management, between the organization and its external constituents. It retains its customers because the organization becomes an active player in business ecosystem. Remember, as a business organization, you are a member of the ecosystem. The business ecosystem is a combination, a conglomeration of other businesses operating both within and outside the industry you're operating. And it also includes the society in which you are uh, located. They are part of the ecosystem because you sustain them and they also sustain you. Without the environment, without the society, without the location where you operate, if they don't offer you a sun, even if it, you are operating a visual environment, that becomes a space. So you are part of the uh, visual system, ecosystem. If you don't play, if you don't conform to that ecological system, if you don't nourish, and be nourished by the ecosystem, your organization will fail. So you are an important player, and you can't be an important player if you don't have uh, engaged employee. And if you don't, if the employees are not working towards the sustainability of the organization. So the business growth also is manifested in the design and the execution of repeatable sales processes that yield consistent results. Why do we call the, uh, why do we refer to repeatable sales processes? Yeah, they are repeatable because every day you have new challenges and you can repeat that system that is working with innovations. If it becomes a one-shot thing, it's not going to yield a consistent result, and that's not going to lead to sustainability. Then you have a leadership that is flexible and adaptive. Flexible to allow employees to work from home. Flexible to bring in technologies that assist these employees to work from home. And then you can adapt, you can change your leadership style to suit the pandemic and other environment, other situations that would arise. So in other words, you are putting your organization into an adaptive mood, which is one of the prerequisites for sustainability. So you can see that engaged employees have uh, become access to the organization. Please turn to slide number 16. We want to look at drivers of 
employee engagement. What factors drive employee engagement? Here, feel free to chip in as you may come because when I'm talking, I may be talking from certain experiences and organization, but I know that these factors, these drivers are universal, but their application and their, the level of their availability in certain organizations varies, even within the same country. Because for instance, a Fortune 500 company, the, their reward system would not be the same as any company that's not a Fortune 500. In other words, you have small, medium, and large scale industries. So the reward systems in these industries vary. So when we talk about rewards, we are looking at the pay. I know you have heard that a laborer deserves his, his or her wages. So an employee, among other things, came to the job or to the organization with the hope of contributing his best and in the end, he or she is paid. So, it is that payment that helps to sustain your employee and help him to solve other needs that brought him, that made him to give you his or her labor. Rewards also include benefits. It benefits like maybe a health insurance, paid sick leave, annual vacation and other things, travel allowances, recognition of employees for achievements. We are talking about innovation. We are talking about being selfless, voluntary in employee engagement. When he or she does that extra things, do you recognize such things? Certificate of recognition, employee of the year, eh? long-term service award. These are part of those recognitions. Okay. It also talks about company identity. Company identity includes such things as policies and practices in the organization. It includes something like performance management. It also includes brand alignment. It has to do with com company reputation. Is your company noted for that place that everybody loves to work? Is it noted for quality products? Has, is it trustworthy? Can customers trust that organization? Even you, employee, the employee, can you trust your organization? This is a part of organizational reputation. Then do not forget, we talk about diversity in an organization. Diversity is not only about gender. It also includes race. It also includes uh, skills. So everything that the brings about different ideas, different opinions, innovations into the organization. That is the hallmark of diversity. And without diversity of opinion, without diversity of skills, organization cannot be sustainable. Please go to slide number 17. In addition to those, he will added six other drivers of innovation, uh, employee engagement, which includes recognition we talk about, HR practices, yes, human resource practices. Remember that labor or personnel are the most important resource of any organization. Even if you have all the technologies on earth, without humans to operate that technology, they are as worthless as any non-existent technologies. So the HR that turns out policies and procedures, processes for managing HR, how fair and how informative, how clear are the HR practices? Because that is one of the areas that will help not only attract the best skills, but also retain them. Then we also talk about 
valuing people. The people you value are not only the employees, but also your customers, even competitors, rival organizations. How do you value them? Remember, you are part of the business ecosystem. So the way you value other people, despite the fact that you are competing with them, can also determine the level of engagement of your employees. Okay, moderator, how are we doing with time? So it's uh, so it's twenty twenty five around. So I say how twenty five minutes, right? So five to seven minutes. Uh, can you repeat that, please? So five to seven minutes. Five to seven minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, my good friends. Yeah, but let let's talk about other things. Um, selected, selected indicators of engaged employees. So when we look at an organization prior to COVID-19, there were some areas, some indicators that your employees are engaged. Their ability to be involved in decision-making in the organization, the action of senior managers or management, which aligns with employee values, Organization in, uh, organizations engage employees work works for uh, organizations engage employees work for had high reputation of social responsibility and you have seen three corporate social responsibility pillars on your right. Okay, so let me just rush over to how you and me because we are not going to do something. Uh, we are not going to invent new employee engagement processes in this world. What we are going to do is innovation. That is what is important in this. Because already existing studies have shown us the various ways employees are engaged and the benefits. So how are we going to do it better in this COVID period? Already uh, a study by Beshiri, sorry if I don't pronounce that very well, 2020 indicated that 35% of employees worldwide in 2020 are engaged. So how are we going to raise this figure? That is the question. We can raise it, first of all, by practicing deep listening. Now you know that you and me know that people have at, at least for a month or so, they worked from home or they stayed away from uh, offices. So what are their stories are you hearing? That is the deep listening you are going to. It's not the question of, hey, how did it go, uh, Bacta? How did it go? Uh, you, we didn't close, therefore we didn't pay you and things like that. So what were your stories? How did it happen at your home? Listen to them, because when you listen to them, they know that you have their interests at heart. As a manager, when you listen to them, when you use that what you heard from them to move to react or change the way you schedule their task, it's going to help them to be more engaged. Embrace flexibility, my good friends. Part of that fle uh, flexibility includes face to face. Please, I'm on slide number nineteen. Face to face, that is. When practicable, allows few of employees not don't fool the room except if you have enough space to observe social distancing. So you can replace face to face with virtual work. Encourage people to work at home or from home. And then you can use 50-50 approach. These are part of flexibility. So half of employees will be in the office, half will work from home and use other flexibilities that allow work to be redesigned or the approach to work. Prioritize mental health of your workers. Provide emotional support and consolidate connections made with colleagues prior to COVID. So allow colleagues to collaborate from home or anywhere they are and let them contact one another. Remember that your employees 
some of their friends passed away, some of family members passed away because of this. Some tested positive and are going isolation and all that things. So this have impact on their approach to job. When you remember this, then that helps you in providing mental health services to them and other required practices, which will in turn help them to remain focused and engage in the work. Do not lower the trust your followers have on you. Maintain and share updated information on the two states of affairs in your organization, such as when you are reopening, guidelines for reopening, and any COVID-19 safety protocols people coming into office or leaving office have to follow. Be innovative and make it a, a, a daily ritual. So US Bureau of Statistics 2020 estimated that 50 million jobs are currently done at home. So that is part of that flexibility. So as far as possible, if, if it is possible for all your work to be done at home, go ahead and do that. And provide them that necessary advice and support so that people or family uh, issues will not distract them from doing their work. Rethink the employee experience. When you have heard from them, don't assume that most HR leaders' vision of employees' experience before COVID are what they focus on. Please change that focus and think about their well-being. Collaborate, be collaborative and get them into uh, recreational clubs, fitness clubs, golf and all that gym membership and other things. Some of those traveling expenses you used to give them when they were in the office, channel them to these wellness programs and it will help them to do well. So, my good friends, uh, please, Moretta, go to slide number 26. So slide number 26 asks you and me from the least employee to the big man in the organization. Each of us, this uh, COVID-19 affected every one of us, directly or indirectly. So what we are going to do is we have to nurture resi resilience. We do that by dusting ourselves. When we dust off the burdens placed on up upon us by this in a new environment, new normal, what is called new normal, then we are going to bounce back. Use the experiences we had when some things didn't go well in our organization. How did we work as a team? Let us reinvent those things that made us tick when the going was uh, not so good. Let us reinvent them and use it to dust ourselves. And well, tomorrow is going to be better for every organization. So slide 27 tells us about looking into the future. Team effort is the key. And that team effort will help us to have a positive vision of tomorrow. Do not paint a rosy picture. Yes, we all have gone through this before and we came out better. And because we did it better that time, we are going to do it better now. So all it takes is for us to be creative in the way we do this. And then you see all of us in the boardroom, we're going to, from the least person to the highest person, we will high five each other and we will look towards the future because we have done it before and we are going to do it better because we are going to get everyone engaged and that is employee engagement. So look at it here. And when you go to slide number 28, just for reference sake, you see everybody in the organization is happy. See smiling faces in that picture. And then you go to slide number 29. You can see the wheel. That wheel provides us 10 opportunities to improve your employee engagement in a post-COVID-19 uh, era. So if we practice those things in our organization, not only will we sustain, we may also increase the level of employee engagement. Here are some suggestions how you can help to measure uh, instruments you can use to measure your, the level of your employee engagement. There is 
a software or a program developed known as 15.5's Free Full Potential Index Survey. It helps you to survey and get information, you know, uh, anonymous suggestion, um, feelings of your employees on how engaged they are in the organization. You can also use employee post survey or you use Willis Towers Western Readiness Post Survey. So any of these, when you use it, it can give you information. And I want you to understand because emotion is involved in employee engagement. Do not rely much on quantitative analysis because it is emotion and you may not measure it statistically. So get to know your employees, get close to them, hear their stories and use their stories, feel their pause, use their stories to innovate. So moderator, questions, comments, feedback. And before I hand over to you, please, um, but fellow participants, there's an exercise we will do because it's not graded. And that's the exercise I told you at the very beginning that when uh, they will, you have access to it with these slides, when you do it on, at your convenient time, try to share information with participants here, including myself, so that I can know in future presentation or so I can include it that this is what I heard from um, my colleagues in presentation today as how it is going in their organization, how they, what they knew about uh, employee engagement. So it could also form a research agenda for you and me, because when we share such information, we use it to add to the richness of our presentations or our findings, to know what happens in India, how it's different from Pakistan, how it's different from uh, maybe China, how it's different from Vietnam, uh, Nepal, or any other country of the world, or even within organizations in India. So on that note, uh, moderator, I'm sorry I exceeded the time, but I'm open to questions. Yes, sir. Uh, so I'll put forward the questions one by one to you. Okay. So the first question I can see is from Somishri. She's asking... Employee engagement is really important and at times work is impacted or delayed when we are involved in activities or initiatives. How to balance for all? Okay. That is where, in the first place, there is the responsibility of, because we look at employee engagement as a door, not a one-way traffic activity. So that means the employee and the manager, supervisor, or whoever is in charge have to work hand in hand. First, it starts with redesigning the job. So you can resign, redesign the job to reduce the overload that individual is having. The individual also can share because that is why we are co-worker relationship come into existence. So when somebody has a lot going in, in his or her uh, uh, environment or uh, uh, cubicle, there is the tendency that at one time or the other, you are given two days off to do certain things. Or you are working from home. If you are working from home, then you have that uh, family work conflict. The redesigning of your job, maybe flexibility, you having ability to maybe work in the evening when the children are asleep, or you working in the morning when they have gone to school, could be one of the steps. There is no one single fix for any of this because it is it varies from individual to individual. What it means is, for the first place, the person involved, the employee, and the organization or supervisor have to work hand in hand. Each they, we have to understand where each other is coming from, and then we see how we design the job, and the employee would also see how he or she effectively manage time and other constraints that interfere with his or her job. So in that way, we are playing the dual role. 
that's what balancing is all about. Because without me knowing what is going on with you, without you telling me what is happening with you, there's no way I can help you to balance that. I don't know whether that helps you to understand where I'm coming from. Yes, no, or you need more further explanation? So, Mishri, do you need any more explanation? Uh, no, sir, it's it's fine, sir. It, it suffices the question. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, so, the next question here is, how we will design easily uh, set roles and permissions to promote collaboration to work grow for better employee engagement? Please repeat the question. How do we take information to work? So easily set roles and permission to promote collaboration to work group for better employee engagement. Okay. Um, well, you see that in an organization, it uh, among its processes, today, a better organization is an organization that is flat. We no longer work through the traditional hierarchical structure. So the information, since we have, we turn the organization into a learning organization. It means that the idea, the skills you have, the innovate, the new way of doing things as effectively and efficiently can be shared with your co-employee during tea time, coffee time, whatever you call it. Or even during when we call happy hours. We move out here. You can even use your email. Good thing, we have various ways we share information these days. Or as we are in a conference like this, at the end of the day, we share conference papers. Then people will go home, look at it, and study. During um, a faculty meeting or staff meetings, there we share new ideas. Maybe a project team worked on certain things today and they're giving a report on what, how they did their work. People in the room, they're going to learn how the work started what and what resources they had, the challenges that they faced, how they were able to overcome those challenges and deliver on time. So you use various meetings. It could be a good thing. You have uh, googlemeet.com. You have uh, WebEx meetings. You have uh, other kinds of meeting platforms that are available today. So you can use any of those mechanisms to share information. If, if it is difficult to uh, share it face to face. And also, as you are in school now or in any other platform, it becomes an avenue to share information. And it becomes an avenue to put hands on deck. Like I said, at the end of this, you have some uh, an exercise to do. That's a kind of hand on deck. It is a way you share information and you use it to uh, broaden the ideas to show people new ways of doing things. And those new ways becomes something somebody can put into practice and it uh, you use it to uh, address any challenges that could help. Or that, and then in the process, employee engagement, because he or she has learned new things, are uh, using new things to do th those things he or she was doing before, to do them better now. Then it arouses more energy more motivation, and that more motivation leads to more commitment, more commitment leads to involvement, involvement leads to finally being a member, co-owner of that organization. Because everybody have your back. Right, sir. Uh, sir, yeah. another question here is, uh, in public organization environment, how do we make employee engagement effective? Well, the, uh, let me give you an example. Before I migrated to the United States, I was a Nigerian. I was a, a Nigerian. In fact, I was born in Nigeria before I shared my citizenship to the US. So in the public sector, we had this uh, notion that it is government job. Or if it is large organizations like multinational corporations, it is it belongs to Coca-Cola or any other thing. You see that in the point, that notion we had, that idea removed us from being co-owners of that organization. 
So in the public sector, what happens is that we have to have a, a new orient, we have to reorientate ourselves. Have that concept, become engaged in the organization, take it as your own organization. Then when you have it, other things will fall in place because now you have emotional and intellectual attachment to the public sector. And when you have that attachment, you are you as a supervisor, as a manager, as a, a superintendent, as a commissioner, as a minister in that public sector, or as CEO or president of the multilateral corporation, you are going to do what now? You are going to use that engagement, that effort you have, that bond that you have with the organization to motivate, to more mentor those behind you. And that mentorship are going to make them change their own orientation, change their own thinking about not being owner or part of that organization, to becoming involved, engaged member of the organization. And when you do it, you see that the public sector that we used to run as if it is something different from a business sector would be turned into a profit making organization that serve the public for which it's established. That's my take on that. First, we start with reorientation, changing our attitudes to that organization we call public sector. And then we become emotionally involved. That emotional attachment will now make us to change our attitude, our behavior towards that organization and as well as the people within the public sector. And when we do that, every other thing comes into place. Every other person will follow our lead. As role models, they follow our lead, and then we'll work together to, to achieve every other thing and increase engagement. OK, sir. Sir, um, another question is from Mr. Costo. He's asking, can an engaged employee disengage? If yes, how and why? Yes, that one of the definitions I did not touch on employee engagement, describe employee engagement or defined it as a temporary, uh, a temporary state, positive attitude and individual places in an organization. So that voluntary nature, that temporary nature makes it possible for somebody to move from being engaged to disengage. So that takes us to the factors that drive engagement. I'm being employed in a new organization now, and I'm told, no, well, you have all the resources, you can, you can rise from um, uh, a generator that is a cleaner to become the CEO of organization. Remember, one of the drivers of engagement is opportunity, career opportunity. And I came into that organization with that mindset that I can rise to the highest position. And I started putting in my place. But somewhere along the line, my supervisor is giving me out to the is not allowing me, it's not providing me that mentorship, that training, that gateway to rise um, uh, or grow on my career. And then there's company B somewhere who is giving my friend who we, we are, uh, engage the same year, the same time in different organizations, opportunity to grow. We started at the same level. He, he has or she has grown higher than me on his or her career path. And he's telling me stories, what is happening there. And we are, I'm also telling him or her what is happening in my own organization. This is part of that information sharing. Your network is not only the people you work with. So when we have such things, it is, at a certain stage, I begin to take stock of, say, what am I doing in this organization? This is the promise I came in with. And now this is what is happening. I've given in my best. And then I'm not being recognized. I'm not being rewarded. The leadership is not there. The leadership I was told was in place is not there, or it's not looking after me. Or as we are in COVID now, era, my organization abandoned me. They don't care. They don't call me to ask, hey, um, see, we are planning to open up this day or the other day. So stay positive Sunday. Let us see. We are trying to sanitize our office and get this done at this line. So 
when all those things are removed, what do you think I'm going to do? Well, I would call my friend on my network, LinkedIn.com or any other place. So, oh, see, um, things are not going well in my area. Uh, let me use a bit of my Niger slang. That's Nigerian slang. Oh, boy, things not the work here. So when I say something like that, what will my oh boy do? That's what will my friend do? He or she will say, okay, um, I'll talk to my supervisor and see what he or she will do. I think they come, they, they, I know, I trust you. you, you're a hardworking person. Uh, I would like you to come over to our company. And so when I move from saying, I'm not going to live here, or in the next six months, uh, if nothing changes, uh, I will leave this place. Then disengagement has come in. I'm no longer emotionally, intellectually attached to that organization. My attitude and behavior has changed from being that a devoted, engaged employee to somebody who is just there for being, so, it, it, just because I don't want to remain idle or unemployed. And I'm marking my time to the time my friend will make way for me in the organization to join them in that place. So yes, it's possible to move from being engaged to being disengaged. Right, so uh, another question here I can see. Um, please explain the best employee engagement practices adopted in top MNCs and the best practices can be implemented in startup organizations. Okay. In the multinational corporations, there are a lot of things that go in there. And of course, I don't want to go into organizational development and change. But understand that among conflicts that arise in organization is what we call organizational politics. And organizational politics is very much, is very visible in uh, multinational corporations, which include among other things, your ability to rise to the next level. And most times because of the global nature of multinational corporations, you may not be known as a worker in the organization. The headquarters may not recognize you, though the local unit or subsidiary may know who you are. And that stops there. So you may not dream of becoming the president or the CEO of an MNC. So but the best practices in a multinational corporation could best be seen in the way the subsidiary, not the main, but because the main body would very much be played. That's where high organizational politics are played. But in the subsidiary, say local units in, let's take for instance, Coca-Cola in India. So Coca-Cola in India, the local office there or the subsidiary plant there, what it can do is it has a better way of linking employees, trying to promote employees based on maybe sales volume, trying to uh, connect, give them the resources to distribute Coca-Cola products in that area. Because there it may be competing with 7up. 7up is another soft drink company that may be competing with it. Or India may have its own brand of soft drink that competes with this national. So for it to maintain its regional dominance or country-wide dominance, then it may practice employee engagement where the regional manager or the country manager is there serving as a link, a mentor, providing the resources employees would need to remain engaged with Coca-Cola a company instead of going to 7up or any other group. Because the regional manager knows that his or her ascendancy to the headquarters is dependent on how well the Indian subsidiary is doing. So that becomes an incentive for him or her to provide you all the necessary conditions that will help you to 
play your own part and be engaged in that organization. Outside of that, uh, you are your own. But when it comes to a startup industry or firm, a startup company, its best practices is first of all, I wouldn't think of one particular this, but I would think that it's going to put its hands on every feasible process that will lead to employee engagement because it's starting up and it doesn't want to fall. So that thing that allows its employees to be innovative, to bring in their creative ideas, is what it's going to allow. So I would think that it is going to allow flexibility. It's going to allow innovative, creative ideas of the individual to, in fact, employees to be themselves. So the reward system is going to be one of the factors for start, uh, startup industries. Because for it to start, uh, to start with employees that will help it to break into the market, it has to attract the best workers. And that has to do with one the pay or reward system, and again, the leadership. That would be my take on startup industries. I know it might vary from other others, or others may have another take on it. All right, sir. So before we close for the session, uh, I would just put forward our last question, which most of our participants have given. Uh, they want you to you know, emphasize on the ways that can be adopted uh, for a situation like uh, COVID-19 or pandemic. They want you to, again, highlight some points related to employee okay. engagement. OK. Points I would highlight. Let me highlight uh, six points. First is the quality of life of employees, because this pandemic has brutalized the well-being of your employees. So the first thing is that, Think about improving, reinventing the quality of life. You do that by improving the physical work environment. The work-life balance has to be established. So in the when we talk about the quality of life, so and the work environment, ensure that one hazards, opp um, opportunities that could lead to uh, infection and reinfection of your workers are decreased. Where possible, increase, uh, encourage majority of them to work from home. Secondly, value people. For senior leadership, managers, colleagues, customers, let them understand that they matter to the organization, they are important to the organization in any respect. The value you put in them is going to motivate them, is going to encourage them to be invested, to be engaged with the organization. Then let there be opportunities for employees, opportunities to advance in their careers. Provide training and development and may I tell you that I just finished training and development in my workplace, yeah. for which, of course, they also I, I received some stipends for participating in that training. How we are going to teach our students in the COVID era, uh, mostly teaching uh, hybrid, using hybrid approach to teach students. So such things, giving them opportunity to grow on their job, training them on how to navigate how to work effectively in this new situation would encourage uh, engagement. Then also have a total reward package, pay, benefits, recognitions, employee of the month, long service award, healthcare benefits, annual leave, some other benefits could also be uh, granting them scholarship to go to, to further their studies or go to training outside of the organization and then pay them their salaries when as and when due. Then also, 
ensure that company practices, which includes policies and procedures, HR policies and procedures, performance management, brand alignment, company reputations and diversity are intact. They are maintained, if not improved upon. Because there is nothing that pays better than having a reputation, a good reputation, not bad. You see that people will be recommending your organization as the best place to work. You as an engaged employee will also be proud to tell your colleagues, your friends outside of the organization, how your organization is the best employer. Then finally, the work itself. Work activities, redesign them to, uh, to make them adaptable to the new uh, normal. Also, have that sense of accomplishment for the work done. Provide resources for employees to work with. If they are working with at uh, from home, provide them the resources they need, the computer, the technology, every other thing that they need to work with. And then let the work process be clear to everybody, what needs to be done, what, uh, how it is to be done. Well, you allow them to be part of that decision-making as to how the work is to be done, but let what to be done be clear to them and allow them to make the decision on how best to do it to ensure that the quality and other things are maintained. So that would be what I'll highlight in summary. Thank you, sir. Thank so you. these were the questions that our participants had for this session. I thank you very much, sir, for such an insightful and uh, learning and enriching experience and deliberation. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, we have already shared your uh, exercise link with our participants. Uh, once they uh, give their uh, responses, we might share it with you for your uh, feedback as well, sir. Okay, thank you very much. And have a nice uh, two weeks uh, seminar, everyone. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye. Thank you, so much. thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, sir. So, dear participants, we have already shared the feedback link and also the exercise link with you people. I request you all to please go through the link and uh, submit your responses. Uh, just for your information, tomorrow's session is on industrial relations to employee relations and will be taken up by Dr. Subendu Das. Professor Das has already shared uh, the case studies that Dr. Subendu has shared for you to go through and answer before attending tomorrow's session. Please go through the cases. Thank you. Dr. Das, do we have to say anything more? No, it's okay that much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you